Hi, this is Anthe. Just going to look at uh, how I painted my latest painting. Not a, not a typical office job. Um, I put some tape uh, down the sides of a cradled panel. Um, I used a grid and um, used watercolour pencil, soluble, and acrylic ink pen and some inks. Um, I, use, I like to start with the ink layers just because they're very thin paint over the top of them, just testing some out. Um, so um, I looked uh, on a tablet, I put it in grayscale, my reference picture which I took myself, um, just showing a few mixes which I will use, um, and the underneath layers. I marked out the brightest colours. Now the original grid it's very, very light. Uh, I marked out the most important part for perspective for me, which was the uh, window frames. So that's why they're on an angle. And I just marked to help me navigate, once I get my layers of paint going, the brightest parts of the people. Um, hopefully it would all turn out in the end. Um, I didn't have enough space to film, uh, so uh, I, that's why there's lots of little clips handheld camera so just adding some washes um, I could see mainly blue in the original because it was on blue glass the reflections so uh, that's why I was mainly I chose Prussian blue uh, and just using a little bit of black to pick out the bridge from all the blue uh, so these are just very thin washes a little bit like watercolors um, just a general kind of shapes and tones I'm just kind of trying to you know make it dark enough obviously on the left hand side still needs to be a lot darker uh, it doesn't need to be exact I'm making the bridge a little bit narrower than what it is because um, once I add all of the you know detail across the rails etc find the tablet easier to use because oh that was a little tip here that if I uh, checked it against uh, take a photo and check it I was just showing here the lighting <laughs> Um, there I have a little easel light, an LED one, you can go cool, warm or neutral. Um, so I just had the tablet set up there in the distance and um, yeah just uh, you know just try and get the, the tones more or less right, take a photo of it, convert it to grayscale and that's how I could check if I was starting to get dark enough. Um, and just leaving those pops of yellow and red that I put in initially right to the very end because they were just to um, help navigate to when I put the people in. Uh, starting to mix the heavy body acrylics now uh, and just starting from the back moving forward just like with any painting so that I don't have to worry about the layers so much. So I'm going to paint over those black lines that I put there. Um, so I'm going from the sky to the buildings then if we go into the bridge and if I overlap just a little, what happens is I'll get a sharper line uh, when everything's dry and then go over with a new layer. So uh, I'm just looking and trying to put more or less the sort of patterns and colours that I see. Uh, it's not going to be all of the fine detail that my camera picked up. Um, and also I'm painting wet and wet, so it's just going to keep things a bit soft as well. To keep my paint from drying out because acrylics dry so fast, I, I would spray um, the plate that I'm using as a, for mixing with uh, a spray bottle that has water and a touch of flow aid in it. And so that just keeps my paint uh, wet enough to work with, plus uh, thin layers. It's a very smooth surface I'm painting on compared to my usual canvas that I paint with. Um, so I'm just working back and forth uh, with a pretty limited palette uh, really. I'm using Prussian blue and raw umber mostly in white uh, for most of the painting and only add adding in a few other uh, colours, mostly neutrals, uh, just sticking to ones that I figured out from doing some pre-mix experiments, um, what was closest to the biggest colour ranges I want. So I don't actually just use primaries like uh, you know cyan, magenta, yellow or blue, red, yellow, whichever you want to choose. 
I don't usually use that. I use uh, whatever pigments are closest to what I want as a result. And uh, I'm just trying to look carefully at the tones and uh, you know look at the lights and the darks mainly it doesn't really matter at the end of the day which colors you use as long as you've got a contrast with some lights and some darks um, some medium tones just to sort of suggest the shapes etc it was like trying to paint a very complex uh, jigsaw puzzle now after doing the top right hand side and a little bit of the bottom right hand side I just slapped the rest of the paint onto the left just to use it all up and just to apply a layer I've done a little bit more detail here. The fine lines I found um, easiest to go over with paint with a chisel, a small chisel angle brush. Um, and yet this just showing the different stages. So I worked a bit on the left as well. Still leaving the yellow and the red until the very end. Uh, so pretty much everything. And there it is, all finished. Um, so this is an artificial lighting still well all finished apart from just a few tiny little details so there's some ropes and things now I did paint uh, some of the ropes a little bit too thick so what I did is I just carefully painted in the color beside it so that the orange light rope is too thick so I painted a bit of blue just to thin it back out now I'm just doing a few glazes so that's the medium with a bit of a transparent pigment uh, so I'm using a Payne's Grey in a Prussian Blue, just applying it in certain areas just to give sort of more of a glassy effect. I will use, I think, a gloss of varnish, but taking the photographs uh, in natural lighting um, before I varnish it so there's not extra reflection. I want to use a gloss just to give more the effect. There's just showing you different lighting again with your cool warm or neutral a little bit more of the detail um it's definitely my hardest painting i think i've done there i was just taking some photos of it in natural light uh, just while there was cloud cover so no harsh shadows and that's what it looks like finished